All right, we are doing 8-2 today, which is trig trigonometric <laughs> ratios. I, I like to call them trig, trig. ratios. <laughs> Remember to take notes and do the check it outs. Our two learning targets today, I can find the sine, cosine, and tangent of an acute angle, and I can use trig ratios to find side lengths and right triangles and to solve real world problems. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. There's a, a, a similarity postulate that says a right triangle with a given acute angle is similar to every other right triangle with that same acute measure. Um, so the proportions of the sides are going to be maintained. That kind of brings us into trig ratios. Trig ratios, they sound fancy. All they are are the ratio of sides of a right triangle. And hypotenuses. <laughs> That's Make right. Hypotenuse, yep. So let's get, oh, we're going to get to the definitions. And Ms. Aiken is going to give you those to you. Okay, so the first one is sine. Um, it says the sine of an angle is a ratio <laughs> of the leg opposite the angle to the length of the hypotenuse. Let's number over that one. So in sine is just written, we write as S-I-N. So this is pronounced sine A, and it's the opposite leg of hypotenuse. Where A is the angle here, this is the angle A. The leg is um, length A, and the hypotenuse is C, the lowercase c. Sine B would be again from the angle B, so we're looking at the side opposite the angle, and over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the ratio of the length of the leg adjacent to the angle to the length of the hypotenuse. So again, depending on which angle you're looking at, cosine of A or cosine of B, it's the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And then tangent, the tangent of an angle is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite the angle to the length of the leg adjacent to the angle. So we're finding tangent of angle A, we'd start here, and it's the opposite leg, so it'd be A over B. And so it always depends on what angle you're looking at to set up the sides that go with it. Okay, write the trig ratio as a fraction and as a decimal, rounded to the nearest hundred. And one thing I like to tell my students is a mnemonic, Toa that helps you remember the ratios so this means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So if that helps you, good, then use it. <laughs> if not, then forget about it. All right. So in trig, the letter of the vertex of the angle is used to represent the measure of that angle. For example, the sine of angle A is written as sine A. So here we have sine J. So remember, Sokotoa. It's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Where's J? J is here, so our opposite is going to be 60. And our hypotenuse is the one al that's always across from your right angle. So that's going to be 61 in this case. And as a decimal, that's going to be about 0 0.98 to the nearest hundred. Cosine of J, so here's J, is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent leg is going to be the 11. So, and our hypotenuse, of course, never changes. So it's going to be 11 over 61, which is about 0 0.18. And then tangent of K, so they've changed the angle. Here's K. It's opposite over adjacent. So the side opposite is going to be 11. The adjacent side is 60. So it's 11 over 60. And in decimal, that is approximately 0 0.18. Okay, now it's your turn to find the uh, trig ratio to the nearest hundredth, or the fraction of the nearest hundredth. And again, make sure you s start with the angle that you're given relative to the parts of the triangle, sides of the triangle you're looking for. All right, special right triangles. So use a special right triangle to write the cosine as a fraction. So if, we, if you remember, the cosine has, um, thirty. it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and the um, ratio of the sides is going to be b, b square root of 3, 2b. So if we drew that, here's our 30, here's our 60, this is our 90. So we would just say this side is b, this side is b square root of 3, and this side is 2b. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent side is our, whoops, getting ahead of myself there. <laughs> b square root of 3, and our hypotenuse is 2b. And even though they're not numbers, they're, they're expressions, we have a b on top and a b on bottom that we can cancel out. So we've got 
the square root of 3 over 2. And even though all we knew was it was a cosine of 30, we were able to figure out what the ratio of those sides is. And now it's your turn. Write, um, use a special right triangle to write tangent of 45 degrees as a fraction. And again, draw out the picture. And just so remember, 45 degree, so 45, 45, 90, a, a, a square root 2. All right. Now we're going to use the calculator to find trig ratios. So if we have an angle that's not a 30, 60, 90, we're, we need to use the calculator to find um, what the ratio of the sides is. The biggest uh, warning that I want to tell you about is be sure your calculator is in degree mode. So each calculator has set their modes differently. Your degree, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's two types of measures um, for angles. One is radians and one is degrees. And if you're not in degree mode, you get a completely wrong answer. So be sure your calculator is in degree mode and you should talk to your teachers or someone that knows how to use it to figure out, to make sure that you are. All right, so other than that, you're just gonna, there should be a cosine button on your calculator. You're gonna plug, you're gonna hit that button and then either, well, depending on your calculator, you either put in 19 and then hit cosine or hit cosine and put in 19. Either way, you might wanna do this along with, with us to make sure that you have your um, calculator in the right mode. So when I plug these into my calculator, I get 0.95 for cosine of 19, sine of 52 degrees is 0.79, and tangent of 65 degrees is 2.14. So check your calculator if you get these answers and you know you're in the right mode. Well, also, before we move on, um, your sine and cosine ratios will always be less than one because your hypotenuse always has to be longer than the other two legs, so it's a good way to check too. That's true. It, they will be between negative one and positive one. And now it's your turn again, as Ms. Briscoe said, make sure you're in degree mode. All right, remember the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the right triangle, just like Ms. Aiken said. So the denominator of sine or cosine is always greater than the numerator, meaning it's going to be less than one. Therefore, the sine and cosine of an acute angle, can we say it enough times? <laughs> it's important to know. <laughs> positive numbers, it's not always positive. For acute? Oh, acute yeah. angle. Yeah. That's all we're looking at right now. Okay. So <laughs> don't listen to me. Next year when you get into Algebra 2, we'll have other types non -acute of Non-acute angles. <laughs> yes, it will be obtuse. But yes, okay, so it's going to be positive numbers less than 1. And since the tangent of an acute angle is the ratio of the lengths of sides, it can have any value greater than 0. So those are good things to know to help you check the answers. So here you want to find the length and round to the nearest hundredth. So finding length of BC, BC is leg adjacent to the angle we're given here. So we're going to use tangent because it's a leg and we have two legs. So tangent of 15 degrees is going to equal the opposite leg, 10.2 over the adjacent leg. Solving for BC, BC equals 10.2 divided by tangent of 15. So BC is about 38.07 feet. On to B, find length of QR. QR is a leg <coughs> given the hypotenuse. And so the leg, given the angle measure here, QR is opposite the angle we're given, so we have to use sine. So QR, sine 63 equals QR over 12.9. Sign for QR, QR is about 11.49 centimeters. And our last one. We are having, oh, it always kind of pop up. Um, find the length of FD. FD is our hypotenuse. And we have 39 degree angles. So we're given the adjacent side. The adjacent of our hypotenuse is our cosine. So cosine of 39 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Solving for FD equals 20 divided by cosine of 39. So FD is about 25.74 meters. One thing you want to remember is don't round to the final step of your answer. So keep everything in your calculator, do the final step if possible. Because you round too many times, you lose a lot of accuracy at the very end.
Okay, here are some for you to find out. Um, and remember, round to the nearest hundred, don't round to the end. So here we have... How do you pronounce that? <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> someplace in Switzerland is the world's steepest Palazzabon railway. Its steepest section makes an angle about 25.6 degrees with a horizontal and rises about 0.9 kilometers to the nearest hundredth of a kilometer. How long is this section of the railway track? Well, let's sketch a picture. So here's a picture. We have, I just start the right triangle. We're told the angle formed at the horizontal is 25.6, so that angle is down here. The height, the rise, is 0 0.9, which came up from there. So we're trying to find the hypotenuse. So at the angle here, information we're given, we're given the lake opposite the angle, and we have to find the hypotenuse. That's where sine is going to be opposite over, opposite over hypotenuse. Solving for x, it's going to be 0 0.9 divided by sine of 25.6. So again, put this into your calculator all at once. And then finding right to the nearest hundredth of a kilometer, the length is about 2.08 kilometers. Very good. Thanks. All right, you get to try an application, the length of the ramp. You need to find it. You may have to be building one. You never know. That's right. Maybe yeah. you like to skateboard or something. Or you need a wheelchair <laughs> ramp for your grip. Okay, so to summarize, make sure you understand the three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. And with the um, acronym, so Katoa. I bet you've had some sim older siblings or older classmates talking about Sokotoa. Sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. It's all relative to whichever angle you're talking about. Of course, the angle is under the right angle. Great. Thanks. Bring your questions to class.